Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, we're going to keep working on our JavaScript.info lessons, the modern JavaScript tutorial, and talk about 2.6, type conversions. We just learned about the different JavaScript data types in 2.5 and how to assign pieces of data to variables in 2.4. So in 2.6, we're going to learn how to move from string to number to Boolean and vice versa. And to do that, I set up this little JavaScript test2.js file in Visual Studio. It's connected to my template.html file here with the script element. And I've closed my Explorer window because I really am not using it and need more room for my code. If I refresh my template file, I get all kinds of console logs. And this is where console log really shines. It helps us see and understand and read information about our data. Let's just go through these statements. Here on line three, I'm simply declaring a variable x and assigning it the number five. On line four, I'm console logging out what is the type of x. And the type of x, the type of data x is, is a number right here on line four in my console. Then in line six, I'm saying x, reassign yourself to the string version of x. I'm using the string function that's pre-built inside of JavaScript to convert x to the string version of itself. In line seven, I'm console logging out, what's the data type of X now? And on line seven, it's what you expect, string. What if on line nine, I have X and I've reassigned it to string one, two, three, and some trash characters. If I console log out the number version of X, if I try to convert this value to the number version of itself on line 10, I'm getting an AN, not a number. But if I use the parse int, parse integer function instead, Look at line 11. Line 11, parse inting this x, gives me number 123. That's why you oftentimes find the parse int function used more commonly than the number function to convert data because parse int will read those numbers in the front of that value and ignore the textual characters after it. And when users are typing data into a input box on a web page, they might finger it and add some numbers or add some trash characters, or they might add a couple spaces in front of the value. If I put a couple spaces there and refresh, notice that on line 11, percent still did its magic. It ignored that leaving space and still picked up the one, two, three out of this number. So parse end is used commonly to convert data make sure that it is an integer. If I have trash characters before the value, even parseInt can't deal with this. If I save that and refresh that, then even parseInt on line 11 now cannot read the one, two, three out of that variable on line nine and presents it not a number. But leading spaces and ending trash characters, parseInt will take care of that for you. Wonderful. Now on line 12, let's look at what the type of X is on line 12 is still a string because I've never reassigned x to the number version of itself. I've never reassigned x to the parse int of itself. I just console logged out. What would that be? If I actually want x to store the parse int value of x, I've got to use the assignment statement. On line 13, I'm saying x, you are now assigned the parse int value of yourself. Let's console log out the type of x on line 14. And on line 14, X has become a number because the parse int value of X is now been stored inside the X variable. On line 16, I'm reassigning X one more time to 5.1 as a string. And that's where the parse float, which is the sister to the parse int function comes in. On line 17, I'm parse floating X and I'm getting 5.1. And notice over here in the console too, this is kind of neat. When the data comes out as a number data type, it's in blue in Chrome. When the data comes out as a string data type, it comes out in black. Even the console is trying to help us with our data types a little bit here. So when I console log out the parse float value of X, which is string 5.1 on line 17, I get 5.1. I look at the type of X. I have not yet reassigned it to anything, so it's still a string. But when I do a reassignment here, X, now you're reassigned to the parse float value of yourself. And look at the typo on line 20. Now I do have X as a number because now X is going to be 5.1 as a number. and It's been converted from a string. 
Let's look at a couple more. Boolean conversion with the Boolean function is pretty straightforward. We know that our only two values for Boolean data types are true and false. And the tricky ones are string zero and string face. When I console log out any string with any values, it's going to log out to be true when I convert it to Boolean. Let's see what Boolean does with the number zero. If I save that and refresh that, when I convert zero to Boolean, it becomes false. If I convert string zero, which is a character to Boolean, it becomes true. For the Boolean conversion, zero, null, undefined, not a number, and quote, quote, with nothing inside of it, all become false, but any other value becomes true. So JavaScript.info does a great job of talking about how these values get converted and what to expect as they morph between their different data types. But what I want you to also know is that while we can convert a string to a number using the number function, parseInt is used and parseFloat is used more commonly because it handles getting rid of trash characters after the number and spaces before the number. The only difference being parseInt will convert your value to an integer number and parseFloat will convert your value to a number with potential digits after the decimal point. And finally, note that when you actually want that variable to store a different data type, you have to use a new assignment statement. Thank you.